You're listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Learn more at wearelibertarians.com. Welcome to the Boss Hard Liberty Podcast. This is episode number 116 of the Central Indiana's Favorite Podcast. I'm Jeremiah Morrill, joined today by producer Chris Guffey and co-host Dakota Davis. Today's episode features Jeremiah and myself and maybe some comments from the city council candidate in the room talking about rural broadband, which Sorry, is a... What? The, there's a city council candidate in there. No, 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 no. Rural Rural. Rural broadband. Rural. God. I'm from Indiana, man. <laughs> I, you don't say it like a city folk. And uh, <laughs> no, I live in the county. <laughs> we know, we, I live outside of the town limits. We know this. Uh, we are going to be talking ab- about rural broadband, and it has a, been a very big topic in the state house in the state of Indiana. And I'm sure wherever you are listening from, it has also been an issue in your area as well, because everyone has these communities that uh, people just can't get very good internet connection out there. And it was a similar situation years ago, trying to run power to houses. Um, and now we've stumbled across the, the same great issue here in the state of Indiana. And we're going to try to just learn a little bit about it. We're, we uh, discussed this a little bit in advance. And uh, it's a deep, deep topic, especially uh, we, might, we might make some of our liber- more hardcore libertarian listeners a little bit irritated listening to this. Well, that is the uh, that's the key to it. The show is about our lives in rural Indiana. We're here to push your boundaries and make you think as individuals. Sometimes we will provoke you. Other times we'll make you laugh. Hopefully, you always learn something new. I know tonight we're all going to learn something new. Mm-hmm. We have uh, we have some people to thank, Dakota. That's right. We always want to thank our very great Patreon members. Um, now, wait, we, we do have a problem, though. We have to admit, every time we come in here, it's, we're, it's a changing it's a changing lifestyle. Uh, and you came in today, and things didn't work right again. Well, uh, a while ago, our Mevo, which is the camera that we've always streamed with, kind of took a crap on us. So we decided that we wanted to get out from underneath the thumb of Mevo and get out from their platform and we just wanted to be able to do it ourselves so we downloaded open broadcasting system i brought in my camera my laptop and uh, got everything set up the only problem is is that the little device that takes the video from the camera and into the laptop is uh, it, it wants like it wants like uh, 100 watts of power it wants usb 3.0 and not everybody has that yet yes it's it's a super super picky I read on Reddit that I could use my uh, fast charger for my USB-C capable um, Google Pixel 2, and it would work. Um, so I tried that today, and I got it all set up so that producer Chris could manage it from his desk instead of setting the laptop on top of the mini fridge. Turns out that didn't work. Didn't work at all, and I didn't discover it until after I already had it all <laughs> set up. So, uh yeah, we're we're continuing to 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 learn it and figure it out. So, uh, and you will also notice that we may not be covering public meetings right now. Um, that's because we don't have a Mevo anymore. The Mevo was the magic that let us cover public meetings. So now uh, broadcasting has become now now it is a multiple computer, a multiple piece device uh, setup right now uh, to make that happen. Uh, not saying it's impossible to uh, to get out and do it, but it's going to be. Uh, a we much would, more laborious effort. We would need to show up and get start getting set up forty five minutes before the and meeting make sure, and know we have power and everything else. Right. So there's there's a lot of factors involved in uh, in streaming. It's not the uh, it's not the light, neat, right. portable setup we had before. If we can get the Mevo worked out one way or another, or get it replaced, then we could go portable. But for now, that's the uh, that's the backstory on that. Uh, Patreon members, we do want to say thank you to uh, over the uh, is it the fifty dollar limit. A yes, month? over fifty dollars a month, you get a personal shout out on each and every show. That is uh, Chris Bilbrey, Christy Avery, John Phillips, Craig DeCosta. We thank you guys very, very much for uh, for the support, and thank all of the uh, Patreon folks that uh, that are help us out each and every week. 
uh, we still do have a, a tea chip going on, right? That's People right. Can buy uh, yeah. buy their shirts. The and tea chip stores are still active. Uh, you can go on there buy the merchandise. We have great, the greatest. People tell me that they are the greatest sweatshirts uh, that can be made. Uh, I've I've heard you that you don't have one yet. Do you? I do not. I I haven't spent but, the money on one either. My mother in law did. I've seen a Christy brought one down. Yeah, Christy came from Fort Wayne well, and had Christy one. Christy let me try hers, and I was able to verify that it is uh, made from 100 percent cashmere. Ooh, yeah, well, 100 percent cashmere, and it's been, were were they Fair Oaks uh, dairy cows to make mm, the cashmere? No, it's it's the most cruel process imaginable because the the material that it uh, is used to make the sweatshirt is softer if they die a miserable death. Oh no, yeah. How, how do they turn? Learned. How do they turn the cow into a goat to make it into cashmere? How do they turn the what? Isn't cashmere goat? Uh, yeah, I think it's a goat or yeah. something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they do it. I've never uh, seen it's it. A, it's a miracle. Anyway, so that's uh, <clears throat> those are out there, and you go to uh, tchimp dot com slash bhol or something like that. Bhol one, two, and three all all separate stores. Um, Three separate stores for three different designs on different types of apparel. Sweatshirts, T-shirts, long sleeve T-shirts. I think that there's a pillowcase in one of them. So you can, I mean. A pillowcase. We can be all over your home, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> can we get curtains? Can we get boss hog curtains? <laughs> there's probably some way. I think that Redbubble had most of the weird stuff when we tried to sell merch on there, but then um, found out that we... Weren't making much money off of that store. <laughs> <laughs> we were making like a dollar thirty a, a t shirt. The obscene profits on Redbubble. <laughs> All right. So here's here's the backstory. Our big show tonight is gonna be on on rural broadband. Mm-hmm. It's a big deal for uh for people as uh as we've moved from hey, we 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 used to have cable TV and watch cable TV or satellite TV, and you used to get the newspaper delivered every day. And you used to pick up the dial, the telephone, and call your friends. Now we've we've kind of morphed into a digital world. Now we just have Twitter, where and we that's where we where, get our news, where politicians tweet each other and yell at each other. Mm-hmm. Where Justin Amash and Donald Trump are are in a death battle here for for a seat in Michigan, uh, where we don't have newspapers physically delivered to our house. We're expected to download them online daily. We don't have uh cable t- traditional cable tv service we have netflix and amazon and hbo go and maybe we stream stream cbs all access the model has changed uh the problem is is that there are some areas including in our community here that don't have access to the incredible internet we have here we have full gigabit internet in downtown newcastle at our studio yeah our wi-fi runs consistently the Wi-Fi here uh, would be like 600 megabytes in the upload speed. It's incredibly fast, and it's great. But if we go, say, three to four miles north of here, mm-hmm. you are in the dead zone. There's nothing right. available at all. You can't get Comcast. You, you get into these into these farm fields with, with rural houses uh, that aren't in subdivisions of any sort, and it becomes very limited. You can try to get a DSL line which is a digital subscriber line, which folks have used for about the last 10 or 15 years. Um, and if we try to try to do some definitions for folks, a DSL line is going to give you, uh, everything's about a pipe size, right? So it's the diameter of a pipe. Right. And what is considered broadband now is a pipe of 10 units. 10 megabits is what a unit is. So 10 megabits is, is considered broadband. A DSL connection was about 1.5. Uh, which is very fast compared to, you know, 0.05 is what we used to have with a dial-up modem when you used to, you know, <laughs> dial a phone number and connect and, and send an email to your they aunt had and uncle. Sacrifice a, a calculator if you wanted to get on there and you <laughs> heard it screams of death. Yes. So obviously DSL was a lot better than that, but you had distance requirements. You have to be in – it's based upon using old copper phone lines and you have to be within a certain distance of the central office. So that had – um, everybody had a, had a copper phone line to their house, generally speaking. Uh, but they didn't they didn't reach everybody because the further away you got, the worse your connection was, the worse your data was. Right. So and we had to they had to start um, finding areas inside of um, inside of uh, municipal areas and areas that uh, 
like had public buildings that might be somewhat close to these rural areas to where it was still profitable for companies to set up data connection points and splice points and be able to try to push more out to these uh, individuals that uh, previously didn't have access. Uh, there's one major data connection point in uh, um, Newcastle. Uh, it's like at, right at I Avenue, um, right down the road from where Chrysler used to be. And it's, uh, I see it all the time. It's, it's in one of our buildings, but it's, uh, phew, there's a lot that goes into it that you don't really see. I had no idea. Uh, I, you walk in there and it's just, there's cables strewn everywhere. Um, Metronet is in there as well, as well as Comcast. So there's two different companies that have cables running into this building and everything's spliced together. And so, so if we're talking about the, the options that we typically have as a consumer for internet, uh, you would have a DSL line, which is like your, your AT&T or Frontier or somebody like that. And then Metronet, which is what we use here, which is an all fiber app, fiber optic network, but you have to have fiber that goes by your premises. So those are typically right. going to be the more populated areas. And then you have the cable internet companies that if you're once again in the more populated areas, you probably have this. And if you're in the city, you probably have two or three or four choices, which is fantastic as a consumer. The issue is, is when you're further out. Right. And then it becomes, if, if you can't get fiber, you can't get Metronet or Comcast or somebody like that. You have to look at satellite options, which are very expensive and very slow and have, have issues with the amount of time it takes to send traffic up and back. It's not, it's not a good solution for, uh, for uploading video or viable connection or having any sort of a, a interaction. It's probably okay for downloading something, but not mm -hmm. for actually using a live, a live connection. So then it becomes a wireless solution. So then you look at uh, what they call fixed wireless a company called New Lisbon. It uh, used to be New Lisbon Telephone Company. New Lisbon Broadband here has uh, has antennas mounted on top of grain bins, and in a very flat area without a lot of trees, you can go four, five, six miles and connect it line of sight between a house and that grain bin, and you can right. provide ten meg service, and it works. And the the only problem is is that it's you have to be in an area where it's flat, right? That's the issue is that, so in our area here, Henry County, uh, it's about 20 miles by 20 miles. And we are the headwaters of two major rivers in the state of Indiana. And yep. when you have a river, that means you have tree lines and you have hills, right? You, you create a valley. So we all talk about the Blue River Valley. We've got a school district and a school corporation named after the Blue River Valley. That means that from the northeast part of the county to the southwest part of the county, as that river flows, you've got this massive valley with all of these trees and to topographical, <laughs> topographic barriers uh, to line of sight. So then that solution doesn't work very well. Um, and then when we get past that, you're you're really down to hoping somebody comes by, or you look at a cell phone solution, right? So mm -hmm. you can you can use your phone, but then you become in this you get into this battle with a cell phone carrier of well, am I using it for hotspotting? Am I limited? Do I only get so much data? And it becomes it becomes an issue, which is uh, what that's what you do, right, Chris? Yeah, I use my I don't I don't hotspot, but I just use my cell phone and then I hook it up via a, an adapter that I picked up at Walmart mm. for like fifty bucks. How does that work? So, all right, so how it happens is you plug it just in the bottom. I have a, a seven plus. You have uh, an Android telephone? No, an iPhone seven plus. Okay. So you plug into the bottom, and then um, it's an adapter that has an HDMI cord, and then it also has, right beside that, it has where you can plug your power cord into it so it can charge and still run the HDMI. And then you just run your HDMI to your TV or laptop, whatever you want to stream, whatever you want to uh, compliment. Uh, connect but, with. Yes, connect with. And then so um, then it will just like basically just shows exactly what's on your screen on the TV. It replicates your screen. Yes. So, and what I do is then I just, I, I hook it up. I put Netflix, Amazon Prime, whatever, and then it just plays through there. Uh, one inconvenience with it that I will say is like in group chats or messages or anything, it really does, the notification doesn't come through on the TV. And so then you've got your phone sitting somewhere else. And you don't realize that you have and you're a lost to the world. Yeah, basically, you're 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 lost in that. And then for 
45, 47 minutes, whatever. And then after, usually about after every episode, I check and see <laughs> if there's messages. And in our group chat, 47 minutes could be a lifetime. That's, uh, yeah, we've, made, we've moved on and we've made a lot of decisions without you in 45 minutes. Yeah. So that's what I do. And then just basically it, man. So that's a solution. I've been looking around because uh, there's potentially some some changes going on in the uh, in the family unit and somebody moving out to the uh, out to the countryside. Uh, so then it becomes all right if you're going to do Wi-Fi like uh, like Mr. Guffey is doing or five a four G connection. Um, there are companies that sell a complete canned in the box. You pick any carrier you want to, and they will send you a Wi-Fi router. And as long as you have a good internet connection. You can uh, you can join their uh, join their program. So there's a group called UnlimitedVille.com dot uh, com that is providing you. I notice on their website, Dakota, they have the pink plan, the yellow plan, the red plan, and the blue plan, which matches Whoa. which matches the colors of the carrier that they go with. So they won't tell you that the pink plan is T Mobile, but right. the pink plan mm-hmm. is T Mobile. The yellow plan is Sprint. The red plan is Verizon, and the blue plan is AT and T. The the red plan. The red plan is two hundred and forty nine dollars a month. So in theory, with a one-time membership fee of two forty-nine, yeah, yeah, and you pay after two two hundred fifty bucks up front. But in theory, you could get internet unlimited mm-hmm. at any place you're at that you have a, a, a connection. You could you could make it work with this, right? Yeah, this promises that unlimited, no data limit, no th- not even any throttling, uh, no but- contracts. <sighs> Two hundred and fifty dollars a month, though. So they're, they're for Verizon customers. What this? Well, and this is you just decide. Basically, their their plan for you is pick the one. Look at the maps. Pick the mm-hmm. one that's going to give you coverage where you're at. And if you could live with the Sprint service, that's a hundred bucks. Then get the Sprint service. If Sprint service doesn't work, then go get the next one up. Maybe maybe your AT and T, maybe your Verizon. Find the cheapest one that's going to work for you. So that's a that's a market based solution that's out there. And it's not you having to build something on your own. It exists. Another option that you have is you can go out and you can buy a modem, uh, about 150 bucks one time purchase on uh, online at uh, on Amazon or somewhere, and it has a uh, um, a little port for you to plug in a an SD card, and or not an SD card, but a uh, a SIM card. A SIM card. And then that is online, and then you can take that data and do whatever you want to with it. it you're basically buying a hotspot. So you're you're taking a hotspot, but you have you're exporting it back out, and right. then you can make a home network out of it. Right. So that's another option that's out there. And then you just pay your your monthly connection. <laughs> Everybody's in the chat saying they're uh, they're confused by the uh, the lack of logos on the screen. Dakota, you really the first week we did this, uh, you put a logo on there, and it went. There was a meme that. When we've not addressed it on the show until this moment, mm-hmm. but the logo's covered everywhere. Now you've got no Boss Hog Liberty logo on the screen. No. Nope. Well, I, and, I told you and the last people are week, demanding it. I, I told you last week, but this was in the Patreon chat. This is for Patreon insider knowledge only, but well, I guess we're sharing it here. Craig DeCosta is the one commenting, and oh, he's okay. definitely an insider. Hey, Craig. Aloha. Aloha. Um, Say hi to Steven Vitito if he's still up. He's down there. <laughs> uh, but I, I tried to put the logo on the screen last week, and it showed up, and it was like the mirror image. It was flipped, and I didn't figure out how to change that. I, it's This is still very much a work in progress, but I'm just happy we have full HD streaming at this point. By the way, we could never do this show uh, out in the country. <laughs> that's, what, yeah. that's what we discovered this week is this is – thank God we've got access to downtown. Yeah. Uh, thank, God, thank God we wound up renting this place and not building a studio at my house and – in the county around Spiceland. So, so these are the these are the options that are out there. The question is, is this solution good enough? And is this a good enough market based solution? Is the market taking care of consumers where you can say, okay, yeah, you you could get internet if you want to, but damn it, it's not mar- it's not affordable. It's not going to work for me. It's impossible to do. Is that is that what we say? What where where's your gut feeling right now as we're as we're starting to dig into this subject? Um. My gut feeling is that there there are solutions, um, but I, I think that eventually, as I see, it's hard it's hard to figure out because um, we we have no historical precedents with this. Uh, the government subsidized the building of power lines to people's houses, 
um, and uh, things uh, things that we would typically argue these market solutions are like in renewable energy um, with solar panels and things. Uh, as the government gets out, the the prices are falling as the companies have to compete. Um, but we but we don't know that that's going to happen because setting a pole and running a line is is vastly more expensive than what it was whenever we started running power lines. So would it be cheaper if the government got out of it? No, no clue. And how, how is it going to work if the government got, gets out of it? Well, we don't know that either because we, there's no historical precedence as to how it happened. The, uh, the, the real pain in this is that we don't know where technology is going to go. 5G yeah. is right around the corner. Indianapolis is getting ready to be a 5G community, which is going to give you connection speeds that are as fast or faster than what you have on, uh, yeah. you know, it, through a wired connection. Right. So are we potentially getting ready to put in a massive physical infrastructure when we don't need to, when wireless is right around the corner and is going to be able to solve this problem? And maybe the solution is the the four G connections that we've that you do probably have access to. One of the things about five G and and you know there's also five G allegedly is going to have to be going to be very close, right? Right. And so so five G there's maybe not going to replicate in the country. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of different towers that have to be uh, pinging in order for you to create kind of a mesh network in order for you to be able to connect and have a reliable connection to it. But there's also other networks that are coming up like uh like google fi which is a a totally open sourced mesh network and um basically it's um it's a mixture of 4g um 3g and then also open wi-fi networks that your phone will be smart enough to automatically connect and disconnect between all three of those different sources the question but the the question is is we're not trying necessarily to get your we have we have connected homes now, right? It's right. not it's not just about your phone and be able to send an email. It's hey, Google, set the temperature in my house to seventy two degrees. Right. Turn the lights on in that. the kitchen. It's hey Google, turn on all of the lights. We will eventually. It, you know those um, th- those are the things that folks are doing now. It, it it's become a utility or an appliance. It, and yeah. you know if you look at a lot of homes, it's not out of the question to have twenty or twenty five devices that are connected to a network. It's not out of the question. I know Chris is shaking his head going, what? But you have smart thermostats, you have smart lights, you have printers, you have tablets, you have Kindles, you have iPads, you have all of your phones that are in the house. You've got a ridiculous amount of devices. You may have garage door openers that are on these things, light switches. Home security systems. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, and then eventually you get to where, you know, we've moved to streaming. A lot of people have completely given up television and it's all streaming based the vast majority of the people that are our age have already done that absolutely yeah, you're watching this right, in, on the show you're watching this right now on on your big screens at home because you're streaming it <laughs> but would it is the infrastructure worth it um as far as we know now uh it's it's very it's very complicated and messy to try to get uh like things m- networks like 5g and other mesh networks out into rural communities. Because I've looked into Google Fi for my own uh, wireless plan, it, replacing Verizon with it, but it doesn't seem like it would be that reliable if you're driving through, uh, you know, Fountain City, Indiana, and there's no open Wi-Fi networks around, and you're just relying on uh, whatever random uh, telephone connections are around that area. So it's there's still infrastructure upgrades that have to be made, whether we're talking about 5G and super fast wireless speeds or if we're going to talk about wired connections uh, like MetroNet Fiber. So on the satellite side, there's a company called Viasat that used to be called Exceed. I've and never they, heard claim, of they claim to offer 10 meg download and 3 meg upload. Or that's then that's their their base plan, and they give you an introductory. They're kind of like a cable company. They'll say, "Yeah, it's fifty bucks a month." Then after three months, we're going to jack it up to seventy a month. Mm-hmm. Um, Twelve meg download speed is probably good enough for most people. I mean, but not make, if you're streaming. If if 
you have a son or a daughter and they are streaming something on their TV and you want to stream something on your TV you at the same get, time. You get about two streams out of that. Past that, you're in trouble. At, yeah, at and 360p. Well, see, I don't know. See, this is the problem. <laughs> is I don't know if they're trying to bait and switch you saying that that's what it is and they want to get you to upgrade. As I, ca- I called these folks today doing research and I said, ah. okay, what happens if I sign up with you guys and I say 12 megs not enough? Can I go to 25? Oh, yeah, you can change. You can change your speed at any time. Uh, but you do have to sign a two-year contract with us before we install anything. Oh, I so gotcha. you don't get a free trial. You yeah. can't test anything. So if you're going to sign up with a company like this, like Viasat, you're on the hook for, I don't know, 70 times 24, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you're on the hook for <laughs> ridiculous wow. amounts of money in revenue to that company. And you don't know. You don't get a chance to test it and say, yeah, this is going to work for me or this isn't going to work for me. Um but they offer 12, 25, 30, and I believe uh, – I can't remember. 100 gig I think is there. 40, 60, and 100 gig. Um, and then they also will prioritize you. After a certain amount of data is used, they'll start to prioritize you. And right. the guy on the phone with me today is like, yeah, it's just a matter of who's in your neighborhood and using it. I'm like, it's a satellite. Yeah. I'm like, what it's, do you mean my neighborhood? It's anybody else in the world. So if somebody <laughs> in California is streaming. It, yeah. It's I'm, totally different than a data connection point on a pole in in – the uh, 1100 block of H Avenue, right? Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it, it's insane. So with that being said, the state of Indiana, uh, when I was uh, involved with Rex's governor campaign, Rex Bell for governor in 2016, uh, we were talking about rural Wi-Fi. Everybody was talking about rural Wi-Fi and both Eric Holcomb and John Gregg and his mustache were, were saying, hey – we, we need to do something about this. The governor uh, found a hundred million dollars out of, uh, out of refinancing some, uh, some bonds or doing something with on, on the DOT side, which governor high tax Holcomb, high tax Holcomb. And he announced a program back in, back in the uh, late winter, early spring uh, that required local uh, broadband companies to submit an application uh, for underserved areas. And basically they're saying that they will provide matching funds uh, to any company that wants to uh, deliver broadband. Uh, you apply to the government, you kiss the ring and go through their program <laughs> and they will provide you, there's a scoring system and they will provide you with, uh, with potentially matching dollars. So uh, basically if you provide a, in your application, uh, you, there have been so far. I think there have been sixty-four applications were, uh, accepted by the state of Indiana for uh, for these for this grant money. Uh, so sixty-four different projects, and you're scored based upon how many houses you can reach. This is rural, so you're not going to find five hundred thousand, ten thousand houses. You're talking. We're literally going to be looking at applications here that are, hey, we can we can serve eight houses for this money, right? It's this is the this is the the homes that Charter or Comcast or Metronet wasn't getting to or hasn't gotten to. Well, I and I I think that there was there's been talk in this community um, about building lines and setting poles and things and like how much would it cost? And for fiber, I think at one point I saw that the cost was like thirty two hundred dollars a mile to to run a fiber line. So there, there's a scoring system, and the the threshold or the buckets were zero to fifty homes passed. So they called a passing, fifty one mm. to two hundred and fifty, and two hundred and fifty one plus. Um, and then if your local company was willing to uh, provide uh, over twenty percent of the match, you got some participation in your score. If you're over fifty percent of the match, and then if you were over seventy five percent, then you get a bunch of points. And then it's also it becomes arbitrary. They want to judge. How are agricultural op- uh, operations impacted? How are residential customers impacted? How affordable will it be? How stable is your price going to be over time? So the government's sitting there analyzing all of this. And this is where I'm starting to read this going, man, it'd be really nice to have high-speed internet in some of these areas. But I'm, I'm wondering, is this the best solution and how are we doing this, right? right. Uh, because I, as a customer, I'm desperate to get it. If you live on County Road 700 uh, West and 300 South – this is probably your only hope, right? To ever right. to ever get it. Um, so then you go in as a company, and and literally they even say, "Hey, letters of support from the community." If you have people that say we need it, and you've got 
you know, the, all of these things are going to go in. If you have a timeline and a map and, and you can show – uh, how you're going to get your match. All of these things count towards your program. 70 points is under a category called capacity, sustainability, and scalability. Clarity and justification for proposed technical solution for the service area. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's saying, can you actually, can you deliver faster internet? I know, right? but like, how do you, how are you going to try to prove that for the vast majority of the points that you need to win that grant? How do so, you prove it? So here's the uh, here, here's what I found. I, I looked at there were 64 different applications that are currently out there, and you can review uh, these applications and and look at them and see what companies were applying. In our market, uh, there were three that I that I that I identified. So there's they're called NLC, which I guess is uh, the name of the grant. Uh, I think it's next level next connection. Level connection. Uh, so NLC grant number two, NLC grant number seven, and NLC grant number 22 are the three that affect Henry County, which is the area we try to super serve. Um, New Lisbon Broadband and Henry County REMC are the two groups that are uh, that are applying in these. So my, my, my first question seeing these are um, why, why are there so many duplicate – uh, names that are appearing on the grant applications because like, each of these are for a certain project so okay. they identify so the, uh, application one and application two that were filed are both for new lisbon broadband company or N the old nltc application number one is for them to service areas of wayne county right so i i literally just went in and said okay we're going to pull the ones that are in henry county and talking about what they do but application number one is to bury fiber optic cable in wayne county and to serve eight houses Right. That's what their application would be. It doesn't say what the cost is. We don't get to see that. We just see an executive summary on the public side. Uh, but grant number two would be New Lisbon Broadband would uh, would serve 13 houses. So 13 homes in Henry County, uh, County Road 300 North, County Road or State Road 3 on the west, County Road 50 on the east. Uh, so the north central part. So essentially – up near the prison, right? The rural right, areas yes. up up near the prison in Henry County is what this would do. Um, and they they cite uh, the pre university study that says if you spend a dollar, you get four dollars back by putting in broadband. So that would be a thirteen home project. That's it. Seems uh, it's great for them, but yeah. thirteen houses, right? Well, compared to the REMC application, ah, this is where yeah, this is where we're going to get into it. Application number seven and application number 22, NLBC application seven, REMC application 22. Dakota, look at the boundaries. I highlighted them here on my copies. Ah. Do you notice that these are competing interests? They are, hmm. they are both applying to serve the same areas. Uh, NLBC's application serves just a little bit smaller area, but they're the same houses. So right. they are not going to apply uh, approve both of these. It's NLBC versus REMC but to service this this uh, this grant. These two companies, uh, yeah, companies are competing to get government money to serve and build the infrastructure uh, in a certain area and try to try to get the money from the grant. It's not an exact overlay, but NLBC would provide service for sixty eight homes, and REMC would provide seventy three homes. Uh, potentially could scale up later on. Um, the NLBC application outlines that it's over 17 miles of new buried fiber optic cable serving 68 properties. Several of the several of those are active farms. Now you know why they say active farms because they give extra credit to right. farms because of the agriculture. So it's once again bounded by State Road Three on the east, County Road 400 west on the west. So it's a four mile road, or four miles. Uh, 200 South, County Road 200 South, which in, Hen in Newcastle is considered Riley Road, and 500 South. So it's four miles east to west and three miles north to south. That area, the places that are in that, would be serviced by this project. There's 73 households in that area. 73 houses. Huh. If you look at the REMC application, it's very similar. Now, that was 68. So REMC's got 73. The REMC one is put together a little bit better. Uh, I'm not going to be the judge of any of this. Oh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and judge it. <laughs> it has one business and two homes where people work from home and at least two farms. Additionally, there are 199 additional addresses from non-eligible blocks. What that means is a census block because 
they they went back to what the U.S. government – all this government junk ties together, Dakota. The U.S. government says these are the underserved areas in the census by internet. So there is actually a guiding website in here on the uh, – Indiana Okra, Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs has a website de- dedicated to this program, and they give you the application census blocks, and you can mm-hmm. pull it up, and you can actually see but that, exactly what areas are eligible for this program. But in the REMC grant, they pointed out the 199 additional addresses because of the scalability exactly. portion of the application. Now, here's the, here's the trick. Yeah. I'm impressed with REMC's application. I gotta say it. Shout out to Shannon. There, Shannon Tom. Now what happens CEO. is you get to there are challenges to these. So you filed your application. Now there have been hundred and nineteen challenges from companies that want to do business uh in these markets versus what the state's gonna pass out. So there are sixty four applications and there have been challenges submitted by AT&T, by CenturyLink, by Charter Communications, by Frontier, by Mercury Wireless, by New Lisbon Telephone Company. All of these groups are challenging other groups' applications because they're trying they're trying to get them struck down hmm. because they're going to try to demonstrate that they already provide service in those areas or that they're going to provide service at in in their plans already. How does the how does the challenge process work? Who is uh who are the employees in I assume there's okra offices that are going to be overseeing all of this? I that, that this is there's gonna be a kingmaker. Who decides if the challenge is valid, who decides, all right, New Lisbon, you're just jealous because REMC's application was better for the same area. Like who who gets to decide that? But in defense of New Lisbon they put their application in way before REMC <laughs> did. <laughs> yeah, REMC was uh, application 22 and NLBC was application number seven, right? All right. This is the trick of it. What? So New Lisbon called dibs. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that's what they're saying is, hey, we already had the program ready. We were ready to go we're, and we're, we're set. So this is, this is where we have to have the discussion or the conversation of what's right. Do we... Do we say the model was set for infrastructure, and this is a utility. This is as important as having electricity at a home because you can't, do, you can't work from home. You can't order on Amazon. We've eliminated food deserts by having internet at houses because you can have things freshly delivered to your home on, you know, it, right. because you ordered it online. Is it so important that we're going to say we're going to allow legal monopolies and we're going to have the government get involved and, and – push these programs out is this the right thing to do is this is this the way we should be doing this or we say nope it's it's fraught with opportunities for corruption it can it can get derailed we're not going to do the job well we're going to pick the wrong companies and people are going to get involved and it's going to get messy and the market's not going to work which well, where's this going as usual the i think that the truth lies somewhere in the middle of all of it because of course as we've as we get more people involved, um, the government gets involved and government is meddling with the affairs of these uh, private, sometimes semi-private um, entities that are trying to put it, build the infrastructure. They're saying that, but at the same time, these entities, it's not, it's not profitable for them to build miles and miles of line and dedicate workers to build these lines and pay them to serve eight people who might have a $40 a month bill, right? It, it, it'd take decades to break even. It would take decades to break even, but it also does afford them the opportunity to provide uh, telephone communications. What, if you have a fiber optic connection, that's, you can sell, right. you can sell you can television, do you anything. can sell alarm systems. Yeah. And that's, that's where you say, okay, it, even if we if we do install fiber, if fiber gets installed, that's future proof. There, you can run so much data through fiber that you're probably good for the next fifty years, right? I mean, copper lines have been in place for eighty years, and we're still using them. Yeah. And same thing with power lines. Yeah. Fiber is going to carry so much data that you're not going to fill the capacity. So if you do get fiber to every residence, every property, it's probably while yes, there could be competing technologies with wireless. 
fiber is going to carry anything you need to do. Right. But if it, but there's going to be the competing technology with wireless. Um, and, and, you know, we can say, well, but they can just stick with the fiber because it's going to handle everything that they can get. Well, if the wireless is $20 a month cheaper than their fiber service plan, and then everybody abandons the fiber and your investment into these communities is gone. I'm talking about this from the, the state side. The right. state's been funding all of these things, and then all of a sudden, 10 years down the road, we figured out a way to make these mesh networks like actually really work. Like The wireless signal can travel miles before it has to hit a hub, and which is not out of the realm of possibility at all, right? It's not. And all of a sudden, all of the money and infrastructure upgrades that that we spent a hundred million dollars on in the state of Indiana is was just a total waste this, of money. In this hundred million dollars is a drop in the bucket, right? We we, we yeah. believe that to be the case now um, because it's just like electrifying the country. Everybody has to get connected. Eventually, you're going to have to connect everybody, one way or another. So, it, what if what if some of these eight people that New Lisbon Broadband Company want to serve? Well, some of them are fine without having the internet. Yeah, Jeremiah. We don't know. I, I mean, the the information that we can get from the from the state website, the Ochre site, is. I mean, it's not like it says, "Yeah, we went and we surveyed the." 10 houses, and of them, there are eight unserved residences. You don't have that information, and we don't know. We don't have. We don't know how good of an investment this is going to be in future upgrades. I'm skeptical, but I think it's important. It's I'm. It's very. It's very weird. It, it all is. It's a. It's a very weird thing. So let's look at. Let's look at it this way. Um, if you're going to buy a house and you're going to invest in a property. Um, how hesitant are you if you find out that you don't have cable, internet, or fiber available at a, at a, as a, at a residence? It's got to be very, very nice home for me to, to consider it. So you're going to have to find a workaround. You're going to have to find a way to live with it. Either you're going to use a, a cable connection. If it's Yeah. I mean, if it's my perfect house, my, my dream home, I don't even have to do – I don't have to put a drop of sweat into this place unless I want to plant – a little garden one day, then maybe, then maybe, then maybe, then maybe I would be you like, justify the the yellow plan at one hundred and forty nine dollars a month. No, but I'd probably. I mean, I have unlimited data now, and I I have a hot spot. I'd probably be like, we can work with this for a minute and and just hope, try and pray. Yeah, I but think then, it, what uh, happens what happens with your hot spot if if it doesn't work? Like uh, it, yeah. it, it, when you leave, There's an even your hot spot's issue. there, right? Yeah, when you know you're. That's the difficulty with hotspotting is it's well yeah if you're there it's fine but what about your wife what what's she gonna do or when you have ki- when you have a house full of I people mean I have the hotspot I have a separate right. you have a I have a jetpack right uh, so I'm how not much how much it. data can you use on that jetpack it's unlimited truly up to twenty two gigabytes all right what happens when you go past twenty two gigabytes I get throttled so good luck streaming your TV good yeah. luck watching the Boss Hog of Liberty if you get throttled <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's very true. This is, I mean, as you can look at, I, I, I'm a, I'm, my home is probably a, a on the extreme, okay? It, because we have all of these connected Your home devices. is not maybe on the extreme. It's definitely perhaps, on the extreme. Perhaps. I have a wireless printer. We hey, sometimes. Hey, Google, ma- turn the lights purple in the family room. Hey, that's what I do every time I go over there. It <laughs> doesn't, it doesn't use that much data, everybody. Um, Here's the thing. I've used 421 gigabytes at home. Holy crap. Because we stream everything. That's our we don't have television connected. We watch YouTube, we we upload things. We I work from home. I, you know, I I run a podcast, I upload audio files, I move data constantly. We use 400 gigabytes. So it's untenable for some of this. I don't know what. Do you have any idea how much you used at home last month? I have no idea. I don't. I don't think people realize how much data they use. So from April twenty fifth at eleven fifty two a.m. to now, I've used. This is my phone in general, but two hundred seventy five gigs. Yeah, and I use. Um, that's just all. It's video. Video. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I, I checked it uh, whenever we lived at H Avenue, and our our 
TV and working habits at home haven't changed since then. And it was, it was like two forty something. So it, so it, if yeah. you're a millennial, you're using a lot. If it's you're definitely more than twenty two, anyway. between two hundred and five hundred gigs a month is probably reasonable. Yeah. So at Easy. that point, your hotspot solution becomes a real crisis. For sure, uh, that that doesn't work very well. Well, uh, what is what does it get throttled down to? Is the question. Yeah, I've never noticed a drop in my speed, and I know that I, yeah, yeah. I know that I go over twenty two gigs all the time. I was gonna say because mine's unlimited, but. You get prioritized, but, right? But, yeah. And if you're in a yeah. more rural area, you may not be competing for the data like you are if you're in a, in a yeah. big city. And but I'm, I mean, I'm pretty much dead center of Newcastle, where I live. I'm not talking about big city Newcastle. I'm talking. <laughs> I'm talking about yeah. I'm in I'm in Los Angeles or San Francisco or Chicago, and I can't get an internet connection. Yeah. Because everybody's trying to use their data at the same time. I'm at the Indy 500, and I'm last in line because everybody else is, has has data left, and I mean, I've used it up. Chris is only using his phone as his internet connection. And do you notice a difference when the throttling kicks in? No. And you had 270 gigs used? Not one bit. Like, and I, and what, who's your carrier? Verizon. Verizon's your carrier. Yeah. And I use AT&T slash Cricket. And I and that's the I think that if I took my SIM card out and I put it in that hundred and fifty dollar device, I think I could survive. I'd almost mm-hmm. like to test it. Um, it would be know. really interesting. I tell you what, you buy it and then after you try it and you don't like it, give it to me. Just give it to you. But see, I don't have. You want to buy it from me? I don't have a good cell phone connection at my house. I, every time that I try to talk on the phone in my bedroom, I drop the call. So that. So there, well, there are other options. You can get external antennas. You can mount an antenna to the roof of your home that will pull in a signal. So that's that, that's a you can go down this rabbit hole and and make it work. Um, where you can you put in a directional antenna that you know where the the cell tower is, and you could pull it in. So if you're looking at a fixed but, connection for your home, that would work. Or you could look at other carriers. You, you may have trouble with your Verizon connection, but at your home, do you have a good Cricket tech connection? Or do you have I, I, a good T-Mobile connection or a Sprint connection? I doubt it. Best network in the USA. <laughs> so it's right in their ad. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> so these, these are the things that, uh, that we're struggling with. This is the next generation of connectivity. Mm-hmm. Because it's only it, gonna, we're only going to need more. We're only going to use more data in the future. We'll it, constantly be consuming more data. We've gone from 400, you know, 480 to 720 to 1080 to now 4K data connect uh, television. And the newest 8K by Samsung. Have you seen those TVs? No. Oh, dude. So crazy. <laughs> but there's no television channel that that broadcasts in 8K yet. Uh, probably so, no no movies either. I don't know. Do you remember whenever the first HD uh, started coming out on TVs? Mm-hmm. And there were like two channels on your friend's TV. Yeah, that, absolutely. Kind of, exactly. And one of them was just like nature, scenes of nature. It wasn't even a, any TV show. It was just pictures of nature. That's what. That's basically what's going on with 8K television right now. That, but the point still stands. The technology and the amount, of, uh, the amount of information that we're having to push through cables or push wirelessly is continuously increasing. It's not going to stop. It's not like we're like, well, we reached eight. That's good enough for here. <laughs> the pipe has to get bigger and bigger. And so we're talking about what they consider to be broadband now is a, is a 10 meg connection. Yeah. You could get a 12 meg connection at any one of these houses with satellite. Right. For $70, 80 $90 a month. So is that satellite connection Ten acceptable megs. enough? Honestly, I don't know. I don't think you'd notice a difference. I think if you had a 20 meg connection at your house, download speed, that's enough. I don't think you notice the difference. I don't I'd, think you I'd, can do enough I to actually make it matter. a huge difference whenever we went from gigabit at, in Newcastle to 35. To 35 megs at your house? Yes. Big difference. Uh, Audrey and I both like... You know, you've, you're streaming some brainless, there's no real information TV show on in the background, and you're, you're both on your phones, and then all of a sudden the screen will have to buffer. It's like, buffering? I don't know, what is that? <laughs> I haven't experienced that in a year. You poor bastard, you're suffering. I have a 100 meg connection at home. I have 100, 100 megs down and 25 up, and it's fine. I've never had any issues with that at all. Paying for a gigabit, would it seems obscene to me, because I, I feel like you want the... When you're choosing an internet connection, you want 
enough that you're never going to have any interruption, but you don't want to pay more than you need. Right. And, but, so, and it also depends on like the size of the home, how old the home is, no, what it was built none with. None of that is true. Well, None unless of that is true. In, unless you upgrade your the the way that the Wi-Fi signal is being output throughout your home, well, yeah, but then, then you're that's, that's not a factor of the speed that you're buying. That's the device that you have that's sending your Wi-Fi out. Right, but it's still more money out of your pocket. Is the point I'm yeah, trying to make? Yeah, but that's nothing to do with the pipe. That's the so that there's the you know th- this is like uh, buying another utility, right? It's the sewer mm-hmm. pipe that leaves your house, so or the water pipe coming in. You've got a three quarter inch line coming in. Brad Wood is on the phone with Frontier right now. Tell Frontier we're coming after them, Brad. <laughs> There's a three quarter inch water line coming into your house, then it's up to you to distribute it. Right. So it does just because you have more pipes or different size pipes doesn't mean you get more water pressure. Right. Same thing happens it's, in your house. So I've got, you know, I went out and bought Google Wi Fi for three hundred bucks and I've got three three devices and a mesh network and I've got network everywhere in the house. And I it's hard to believe, but there are thirty devices connected to my home network right now. Holy crap. Thirty devices. Jeez, oh, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it, it's a utility. Things things are just on it. I think that you kind of went down this rabbit hole. Of you got a couple of smart devices, like you got the Nest thermostat, and then all of a sudden, and I just, I watched the transition, and then you went with everything's got to be connected. You went and got all the lights, uh, outlets, and everything, and now you're. Now you've got thirty freaking devices hooked up to your there home 30, internet. There are thirty <laughs> devices connected, but every every TV is a device. So if you've got a right. TV in the office that has a Chromecast on it, if you've got a TV or you've got a you got I've got a little Chromecast audio in almost every room in the house, so that I can say, "Hey, play this," and it plays. So if I'm in my garage, it's a twenty five dollar mm-hmm. device I paid one time, and it'll it'll tell me what the weather is, or I can right. add to my shopping list, or I can listen to a podcast. It's dirt cheap, and there's no fixed cost. There's no monthly cost. Um, but that's yeah, but the, they're listening, man. They use that stuff to listen to you. There's a little switch. Flip the uh, listen. <laughs> I'm begging for listeners on the show. Uh, Guffy and I went over to uh, Councilman Aaron Dickens' house yesterday and helped him uh, helped him relocate a, a Jesse French piano. Yes, we did. Um, out of, of Newcastle. Uh, yes, a beautiful Newcastle, Indiana made. Uh, and I was I was in his basement, and I uh, <clears throat> I told his little uh, listening device to play my show. Got an extra listen out of it. I just go to people's houses now and say, hey, Google, play Boss Hogger Liberty. Hmm. And it does. It wouldn't happen in my house. Nothing would happen. It wouldn't happen at my house. <laughs> <laughs> Unless my phone picked it up, but I have that little feature turned off. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's entirely up to you. CIA doesn't need to know what I'm talking about. You're, you're trying to broadcast everything out. <laughs> Brad Wood is sending links in the uh, in the old chat here, trying to uh, trying to ask us about something that happened last year. Dun, 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 dun. It's a YouTube video. It's a guy. It's a YouTube video. Some guy talking. <laughs> oh, it's him. It's him explaining that it took him sixty five days <laughs> to get internet last year with Frontier. Uh, yeah. So Brad, you are down with the struggle, man, and that's probably the best you have. You don't want Frontier. Nobody. I have a Google Home in my high tunnel. Exactly. He grows tomatoes and he wants to be able to listen to something. So he's got a Google Home in the high tunnel. I've got him in the bathroom. I wake up in the morning. I say, hey, Google, good morning. And it says, hey, Jeremiah, here's how long it's going to take you to get to work. And here's the weather today. And why don't you listen to the news while you take a shower? Do you really need that, though? What's the difference between that and flipping a switch on when you, you know, when you walk into the bathroom and you turn a light switch on? Do you want to be that connected to the rest of the world? To do the I, internet do I want to know time? who Trump bombed yesterday? Yeah, I want to know. Oh, why? They, they report to me what happened Ugh, so that I can talk about it. Too much junk filling your head. Oh, man. This is content. This is where we get it from. Eh. Tells me how to dress in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I woke up this morning and it said it's 59 degrees. And I said, go home, Google. You're drunk. <laughs> I had to put on a toboggan this morning. Isn't it crazy? <laughs> talk about how rough that was. Yeah. So anyway, this is... It's a big deal. I I don't know, man. I I don't want to see the government go in and set up a program like this where we're – for eight houses, for nine houses, for ten houses, where we're going to spend four million state dollars to, to make sure that some house in Posey Township in Rust County has, has internet. Right. At the same time, we need to, to make sure that everybody has access to this. Because it's going to be it's it's the equivalent of reading and writing, and you know if we have a, if we have we we guarantee that we have a public school system in the state, 
This is another one. This is another example. We had e-learning days. The people in Newcastle all have inter- access to internet, fast internet. And they said, yeah, we have e-learning. We had Stephen Vitito on last uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and we said uh, – or the, the city, the community said anytime Newcastle schools are out, then the rest of the community is out because we're all integrated together because of the uh, – The career the center. The career center. So if, if Newcastle doesn't have school, then Knightstown doesn't have school. Well, Knightstown doesn't have the e-learning devices. They don't have the ability to have their kids do e-learning. Uh, so every time that Newcastle or the other area school said, hey, we're doing an e-learning day, that, that basically just invoiced Knightstown for another day. So they had to go to school for an extra week this year where Newcastle didn't. Yep. Um, and that's that's probably a problem as well. And it's not just a matter of having the devices, but you have to have, have, to internet, have internet in the homes so that people can do it. Um, so it, it really who is knows how much data that thing is eating up. How much you're eating through if you're on that little device watching videos and lectures for your homework assignments and then also trying to type notes on your Google Drive or whatever that's also connected to the internet. It's an expectation that you have data, that you have a connection of some sort. Right. Uh, you know, if you go to college, you know, if you go to college, if you if you are a commuter student, you need to have internet. It's yeah. not it's not it's that's not, it's not even optional. It's it's not oh yeah, well it's a convenience. It's it's required. Um, you could go to the public library and try to do everything there. It's just it, – it, it has become it's a as close to a necessity as you can get without being actually a necessity. You know, you have fundamental needs like water and food and shelter, and then you have it, these things that society has deemed that you need, and Internet's one of them. I mean, it's just the way it is. If you want to do anything, you want to get a, you want to find a decent job. Half the job postings that you apply for are on the freaking internet now. I'm waiting. Like, I'm honestly what, waiting on MyBoar and, and Realtor.com to, to have a box checked uh, as far as what utilities are available to include broadband internet. Is broadband available? Is natural gas available at the house? Is city water, city sewer, broadband internet? What yeah. you know, what all, of, the inter- all of those things. We want those are the those are the things we want to know. Tells you what school district it's in. Tells you what the, who the electricity provider and the gas provider, and also who the broadband is through. That's wow. Well, I don't. I wonder why they don't include that already. That wow. Well, we really need to get them on the phone. <laughs> Come on, Zillow Realtor. Let's call them up. So anyway, that's the uh, that's the big topic this week. That was a, I went down the rabbit hole and I said this is this is going to make a really good conversation because it's not cut and dry. It's not easy. And as a libertarian, it's really not an easy solution. Right. Because it's the government's already been involved so much in infrastructure as far as uh, utility and running lines and things like that go. It, we we legitimately don't have a, a, a foundation for what this would look like without any government interference. Missy Timmons is watching right now, and she says, in the suburbs of Kennard, Indiana, our only option is satellite. That's all she can choose. I don't think that's entirely true, though, Missy. If you've got uh, if you've got a data connection on your phone, I think you probably could take a SIM card out of it and put it in one of those routers and try it. Um, whether or not that's better or not, and I'm very curious, Missy, if you'll tell us how uh, how your how your connection is, what, maybe what, what, how much you pay and what kind of data you get, and if it's if it's terrible or if it's acceptable. As yeah. I really don't know, I haven't tried it. It would be really interesting. What if it turned out it was like awesome and no one knows about it, and I. And the only reason no one knows about it is because, uh, like, all the big cable companies want to keep it, like, hush us. They want to crush it down. So I did call the uh, – what was the name of the company earlier? Uh, uh, do, 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 do. Whatever they were. They used to be Exceed. Now they've renamed themselves. Oh, uh, the the V. The Viasat. The Viasat. They said, uh, we do we do the work for uh, for the Air Force, and uh, we actually do the data connection for Air Force One. They're blah, like, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Air Force One uses our internet. <laughs> like, that was their selling point. Mm-hmm. But then he also was like, oh, yeah, well, as long as other people in your neighborhood aren't using it. And that's where I'm like, dude, it's a satellite. <laughs> Uh, there are people in the chat, Brad Wood again, uh, broadband internet would be the main reason why I would run county council. If it would make a difference, go for it, Bradley, Brad, you can run for the county council, but they don't have anything to do with getting you your internet. Bradley is in Wayne County. Uh, Tom Firkinoff listens to this show. You guys need to hook up. Um, Sarah's asking about new Lisbon broadband. Sarah, you should have joined the show much earlier. We did. We detailed a lot of stuff Mm -hmm. in new Lisbon broadband. 
Uh, but they, uh, you know, th- those guys. Sir, are now, you're like they, an hour late. <laughs> <laughs> they offer. They have two different solutions. So they're they're one of the old school companies that had. Well, they they've had three different solutions. Back in the day, you used to dial into their number at three three two one two three four or whatever, and and you get your screeching internet. Uh, but then they they went moved to the fixed wireless model. So they I know they have. I talked to their folks today. Um, <laughs> Missy says for 150 bucks you'll try it. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm just saying return it, Missy. If it doesn't work out, <laughs> return it. But see if it works. I want to know if. I, but I do want to know how how your connection works now too. Um, they I know that New Lisbon has a uh, a fixed device set in. Um, Millville, Indiana, home of Stinky Wilmot, Rex Bell, or birthplace of Stinky <laughs> Wilmot, Rex Bell, and Wilbur Wright uh, on on the grain elevator, and they did the same thing up in Moreland. Um, so they have them there, but right, they do. But if you're trying to go to further reaches, you can't get there. Hmm. Yeah. So Missy's saying that she doesn't use the satellite because they've heard so many horror stories. And they just use the Verizon data. So yeah, that's the, that's the trick. The next step, next level stuff, Missy, is to take your 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 card out and plug it into one of those routers. Uh, you just got to be brave and buy it on Amazon and see what happens. <laughs> see if it's worth it. See if you change the world and give us a report back next week. <laughs> if it doesn't work out, put it back in the box and send it back to them. I might drop Comcast for that little box. It's who knows. It might work. I mean, it may, maybe that's the solution. You you have a home connection there, and you plug it in. Because I, I looked at it, and I'm like, man, you could you could you could go get an extra dummy phone, and then you tether into a device and you do USB. But then you got to have the phone turned on all the time, and that's that's a giant pain in the butt too. Jeremiah, I'm thinking about trying to support boomers. So, so um, I know you have cricket. Yeah. So I'm looking at cricket, I'm trying to find out how much it would be for you to add. Another phone to your line. Uh oh. Does this does this have a Guffy solution in here somewhere? This is the Guffy solution. Let me pay you the additional amount. It lo- <laughs> it's looking like it's an extra like ten bucks a month. Uh huh. To add to the unlimited plan, and where it's after twenty two, you get throttled down. Right. Do then you get your own twenty two gigs, or are you going to use 22 my twenty two gigs? per line? Okay. All right. Mm, per line. You have my attention. That. So yes. I've never gone over forty four. So see, twenty two per line. Okay. And then that individual line will be throttled. So then I could take that SIM card and we could try this $150 thing. All right. You buy the device and we'll take the SIM card out of mine. We'll plug it into it, see how it works. If it works well, then we'll go out and we'll get another uh, We'll get, we'll go get another phone. This sounds like a plan, Stan. And we might have you internet. We might need For it $10. because <laughs> the – Well, I mean we'll take the bill and divide by three. That's the only reasonable way to do it. Whoa, hold on. Why <laughs> Well, why why am I going to carry you? Because I'm just adding on for ten dollars. But <laughs> but if I just take the bill, bill and divide by three, now there's three phones on it. That seems irresponsible. <laughs> well, I mean, it's I support you, Guffy. It seems reasonable. <laughs> Thank you, Dakota. If this works out, I think it's worth trying. How, what's the maximum number of devices I can have on this uh, this pyramid scheme? Uh, hold can, on. can I go to four? Can I go you to can. five? You because can't do four. There's it's a very right real possibility that I may have some very close friends and family that live in the Messick area that would also need to get on this program. Yeah. Four lines for a hundred dollars. Okay. So I'm not on that plan. You get forty five dollar discount each. Uh, I'm on not third and fourth line. I'm on a I'm on a more expensive plan than that. I think. How, how? I'm looking at their plans right. now. I don't know. I pay one fifteen. You're two. getting gypped. Tanner Purdue at Brisket Wireless <laughs> and duped you, man. I don't know. I this is cell phone plans for a thousand, Alex. I'm, I'm telling you, you're getting duped. Uh, <laughs> we're looking. Oh, hold on. Here, here's here's why. They've got like two different plans, like two levels. Yeah, because, okay, so you have the... Uh, I've got the good one. You have the unlimited 4G LTE plan. Yeah, I don't uh, have the, 60 a month. Who would get me. unlimited like 3G? That would, this is just that data speeds would, up to three megabits. Yeah. What's the what's what? one I have? Uh, it just says 4G LTE speeds. Yeah, so I video get, streaming quality is still about 480p for both the unlimited and the unlimited extra. So tell me what the difference is. I'm I'm looking and I don't see a difference. I think you need to buy the thing and we'll test it. It just says high speed access. Let's see what that says. <laughs> this is why it's confusing. There's not a great there's not a great can solution other than the group that says yeah for 150 bucks we'll do it. This is yeah, this not, is so complicated. 
We're millennials and we can barely fit. We can figure out a way to make this work after machinating over it for hours and going, yeah, this will work and we're engineering a solution. There's not a company you can just call and say, yeah, give me, give me cheap wireless internet that's going to make this work. <laughs> Brad Wood, I'm trying to grow a giant sequoia tree so two generations down the line we can put an internet antenna on it. Well, that was the other thing is I called – so I, I went back and forth with NLBC quite a bit today. And I, I said, hey, if I erect a tower, could I put my antenna on that and see if that works? And he's like, yeah, we can come out and try it. There's no guarantee it's going to work, but we can certainly try. So that's, that's just a lot of unknowns of, yeah, you can – I mean, yeah, you can build a – you can build Give something a shot, tall man. and see what happens. Yeah. And of course, you may saying, spend, you may spend $2,000 building a tower. I'm reading through this, and I don't see the difference at all. So oh, man. I say we should try it. All right. Well, that's, uh, let's – you buy the device. Or the the thing the one hundred and fifty yeah we should make sure we can return it first right and maybe you, well, it's you, on Amazon you try so it then Missy Timmons tries it I, and I then, tell you what what we'll, we'll pass it around like the village hotspot why don't we split that three ways because <laughs> you have to to use it you have to have it in one place do you get the internet I'm on not Tuesdays? buying it. I'm not putting any money in this no three ways me him and Sarah three ways okay on the phone line what's up him what, and Sarah that's I already the same have, money. That's fine. I, I wasn't trying to make ways. you pay half. I was going to make you have you make pay a third. Dakota's even tougher. I know he's crazy. I ain't paying anything. I ain't paying Jack. <laughs> I I don't need your plan. I've got I've got a I got Metronet at my house, and you can have Metronet at your shack too, but you don't choose to. It's too expensive. You know I can triangulate the signal and find out where you live. No, you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. I could put where's my phone on it. All right. Sarah, you're not out. You're included in all <laughs> deals dealing with Jeremiah. All right. That's uh that's enough of this. That's that's the broadband answer. We'll see. By the way, these uh, these applications that are out uh, that REMC and uh and NLBC have, uh the state's going to have them reviewed and we'll have answers by July. So, uh um, Who does the review on that? Is that Okra? Okra and I think Indot is going to somehow Indot is going to administer the grant. I think because they stole the money from Indot to start with, Indot has to pay it back out. Uh, <laughs> but Okra is involved, the Office of Community and Rural Affairs. In Your roads are so bad because we are going to give internet to eight people. <laughs> Missy Timmons wants her share of the internet on the weekend, so she she needs her Sunday Netflix. Uh, if you're working out a program there, Guffy, that's fine. I'll take. We can do this. I'll. I'll all right. So I'll be Monday through. Thursday. You uh, you go visit Sean Rao and have him draw up a contract yeah. legally and uh, have Jeremiah sign it. Let's just do this verbal contract here. <laughs> your word is your why bond. Don't, why don't you and Missy and her a, uh, a cell phone sharing plan? I don't know her. She's a lovely lady. <laughs> but I don't know her. <laughs> All right. She used to work at the Marsh back in the day. Does she have Venmo and I can just Venmo her? I, I don't know. We'll work this out offline. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I was going to pay you is just Venmo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see how that all turns out. Seems simple enough. You got any final thoughts for us, Guffy? Uh, yeah. Anything we should have talked about we didn't get to? Yeah. So I have two things. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to remember the second one right now. But the first thing is, is that my nephew uh, got the game ball tonight. He play. He plays in the six to eight year old little league. Coach's pitch. I watched a t-ball game this week in Knightstown for the first time. Six to eight years old is probably much, much more organized than T-ball. You, d- you didn't watch the women's football league we've talked about so much on this show? I've not made it to that yet. I was hoping to go with Mason, but he's he's quit talking to us. That's right. He yeah. has. Mason he's quit. Us. Once it quit raining, Mason apparently has plans on Thursdays. Uh, it's because you've basically forced him to empty his bank account for us. He uh, he drove by and screamed at me uh, the other day. <laughs> uh, and I was outside working in the yard. And uh, he's in the back seat of a car, and I just hear Jeremiah. My neighbors are old, man. You just you've upset them all. It's it is crisis. Anyway, so uh, game ball for uh, for young Guffy. Yes, yes, young Corbin. So he will be in the championship game, which is Saturday at noon at the Little League Diamonds. I will be there. Man, oh man! So um, if you see me there, stop by, talk to me. I'll be wearing your. Chris Guffey for something shirt? No, no. I will be wearing the Cardinals shirt to support my nephew. Because at, your... at this point in time, that's more important. You should wear a Cardinals hat and still have your shirt on. No, no. 
Because, see, then that requires me to buy a Cardinal's hat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I already didn't really want to buy the Cardinal's shirt. I've got a, I've got a Reds hat. Would that help? No. It's the right color. Mm, possibly. But no. A couple of Reds hats. Oh, the second thing I want to say is uh, congratulations to the Libertarian Party of Allen County. I went up there. You were in a parade. Yes, I went up there this weekend. Uh, this last weekend for a parade for them for Canal Days. Um, some of their people, uh, including my the lovely Christy Avery, came down and supported us, the Henry County Party, and then also supported me and Lisa, the candidates for city council, uh, in the Memorial Day Parade. And so they had their own little Canal Days. So we went up there, me and Lisa. We left here at like 7 o'clock. You were celebrating the canal that bankrupted the state of Indiana? Yes. That was what you all were doing? It sure was. But anyways. Um, <laughs> the reason we have a second constitution. <laughs> <laughs> so we will never do that again. We went up there. And that was that time they tried to put infrastructure in and provide for everybody. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it turned out horribly. <laughs> and it bankrupted the state. This is not like polls at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, But we went up there. Uh, it, it was a theme event. So they gave us costumes. They told us what to wear. I was wondering about your attire. I was a surveyor. Um, then, was everybody in the parade dressed like this, or just your group? This was our this was this was our float. This was our theme. I hope you won an award. We did. We came in first place in the nice. non-commercial float. Okay, is, if I remember correctly. So, well, as long as you won. So we I was are, skeptical we, we when I saw the pictures. I didn't have much context, and I said, "What in the hell is he doing?" I know. All I have to say is, Sean, the fault. You messed up by not declaring us, the Henry County <clears throat> Libertarian Party, is the winner. It's not the fault. It's Dufo. French. Dufo. Dufo. Sean Dufo. Yes. You messed up. You just didn't want us back-to-back champions. I don't and know you if didn't he was want the us, judge. And you just didn't you just, want to give us the belt. You just blame him for anything. He's my direct contact with them. All right. <laughs> it's uh, just like you and Darren Jacobs. He's my direct contact. Chase, uh, do you have anything? Oh, Chase didn't show up. Uh, Kate, do you have anything? Guess not. Uh, Guffy, no. no uh, we Ma- already went to him. Mason? Mason. Mason. Mason, you got anything for us? Oh, no, Mason. What, what Danny? about Danny? Danny, yeah. you got anything for us? Nothing. <laughs> Sean. Sean is defending himself in the chat right now. <laughs> I was not a judge. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lie to us, Sean. Sean. I had your back. I, I, you you didn't want us to be the champs. It's just shameful that uh, that Guffy treats you this way. Wow. Sad. All right. Dakota, that's a fine haircut you got today. Thanks. Uh, you, they turned you into a model. They never took my picture and put it on the internet. This is the third time. I've been on the... This is at the MVP? Yeah. She, uh, she, she has been putting on the American Crew um, hair products, like a little th- cape on me, and making sure that it's in the shot usually. It, and I told her to do that so I could, maybe I could become a model and get some money for it. I mean, she's going to be taking my picture anyway. I might as well get paid. Using your likeness. That's right. So that's at the uh, MVP for the no VIP. modeling contracts yet though yeah that's the MVP barbershop in Newcastle um, go and ask for Angela and tell her that I sent you no tell her that Chris Guffey sent you and I can get a free haircut you have to get three we have to get three you need to go and she told me that as long as someone comes in <gasps> she gave me three cards well you know you don't <laughs> go in every week like I do I have special privileges in the barbershop I went today <laughs> I know. <laughs> I went today, and we all uh, did. Yeah, we all did. Oh, yeah. I got a clay, yeah, and and yeah. if you if you tell uh, if you tell Clay that I sent you, he'll vote no against the budget just for me. That's the way, that's <laughs> the way it goes. He'll vote no to the county budget, and we'll all be a little more free, and maybe pay a little less in taxes. Uh, we that's, said that's the agreement we have. The last time that Clay was on the show, we called him the proverbial no vote on budgets. So we'll see. Who knows? So uh, one of my. Uh, one of my final thoughts, or I guess my only final thought, is we talked about Twitter being our form of communication and Justin uh, Amash going against the president on Twitter. Um, the most unlikely of pairings has also happened on, on Twitter. Um, the Senator Ted Cruz, as well as uh, freshman House member Alexandria o- Ocasio- Ocasio-Cortez. Yeah. So fresh, so face. They are going to be teaming up for the second time to try to introduce a bill to make birth control available over the counter. It's a fantastic idea. Mm-hmm. 
But uh, as long as their husbands approve, of course. These, these are uh, the most unlikely of matches ever made. I assume that's Ted Ted Cruz's uh, hook. Is he wants to make sure that the the guy says it's okay. So his his husband. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, no, I, mean, I don't. I don't understand the joke. I just is it. It's a paternal thing. It's you know you can yeah you, know, you can have birth control. It's like it was, it, you need to watch more uh, Betty and Don Draper, uh, Mad Men. Did you ever watch Mad Men? No, I I've watched one two episodes. I never really liked it. Yeah, it would have it would have been enough for you. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, it's the uh, it's the old the old forties and fifties and sixties mentality. I I like seeing it though. I like seeing that because they're two very different individuals that are using this 21st century form of communication that is um, basically wildly known for making people horrible at communicating, and they are using it to try to come up with ideas that they are able to work together on. Uh, Congresswoman Cortez probably should check with uh, Planned Parenthood and those groups because they've been one of the biggest right. opponents of doing it over the counter. Yes, um, because that... that that takes away the vast majority of their business. Protectionism, one hundred and one. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's uh, that's great. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they get somewhere with that. Uh, also, um, we're going to praise AOC, but then she also made a really stupid comment about congressional raises. I don't like talking about her that much because I think that it's like she gets memed so much on social media, and it, it like I get it. She's got a lot of dumb ideas, but there's 400 other members of, or 500 other members of the do Congress. Wanna, do you want to check that the notes from also, yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm making room for 35 of them to be somewhat okay, but there's 500 of them that also have really stupid ideas that we pay no attention to. She just happens to be from uh, one of the largest uh, metropolis in the United States, so we pay attention to her a lot. From Newcastle, uh, or Newcastle, from New York City, <laughs> a- AOC from Newcastle, Indiana. <laughs> so, uh, we are represented by Mr. Greg Pence, uh, right down the hall, right down the hall. Uh, one last thing on the uh, on the rural broadband side, um, the the one of the bills or the bill that uh, provides the hundred million dollar grant program uh, is Senate Enrolled Act four hundred and sixty, and that was uh, authored by uh, by Gene Lysing. Um, so she sent out a communication as well, uh, out- outlining the program. Um, so that means that, uh, our area should be very well taken care of, right? Uh, you know, I'm sure it's entirely on the, uh, that's how this works, right? We keep scratching her back by electing her. <laughs> <laughs> it's in, I mean, the, the, honestly, that pro the program is designed to, to benefit communities like this one. And yep. if it's going to work, they're going to spend the money. I would expect that NLBC and Henry County, uh, REMC and Nine Star Connect, those groups are probably going to be very well positioned to uh, to to get some projects out of this. Um, I don't think that people understand or know what's out there, so I thought it was really important to have this conversation because we talk about we want internet, we want internet, we want internet, uh, but and and we need you know do we have a task force? Do we have the right things going on? Are we are we engaged or trying? Um, this is hopefully the start of that conversation. Um, so, if you're interested, call <laughs> call these companies up and ask them ask them what's going on. And if you're on the list, and if you you know if you want to get connected in, and, and you're not in one of the areas that will potentially be covered by one of these grants, what are your options? Um, and have the have this have these conversations and figure out how you're going to get yourself served. Um, I, I guess where I'm coming down on this is it's very important that you have a connection. It's it's a non-starter to not have one. The question is is how do you do it and how do you scratch and claw and get yourself to the point where you do? Is it through this through one of these grant programs and having a service provider do that, or is it oh, no? I'm going to find a I'm going to sign up for satellite or I'm going to do the other. The thing about satellite that's so irritating to me is that you have to make a two year commitment before you know. Yeah, you don't get to test it. That two year um, commitment you don't get to is test outrageous. The yeah. You don't. There's no. Because they could come out, they could hook it up, and it could be total crap. Yeah, and then you're stuck, and then you're and at then seventy dollars. You're hot committed, and then you and then you cancel your credit card and say, "Take it. Yeah. I don't want anything to do with this. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> be gone." And then they send you to collections, <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing you know, the next thing you know, is- you have a three hundred credit score. <laughs> you can't secure a car loan. 
and you still have no internet because you didn't pay the bill, <laughs> <laughs> and you can't apply for your next job. All right. No That's, wonder Missy's not <laughs> tried satellite. God, it sounds horrible. It does sound it does sound risky, uh, but it's good enough for Air Force One. <laughs> All right, that's enough of this. We will see you all next week. Wait, wait. what, 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 what? I I thought of two more final thoughts because usually I never have anything. Gosh. Real quick. Uh, So the Indy Fuel has released their schedule for next season, and I'm super pumped about it. And there's a big announcement tomorrow. Hopefully it's the naming of the new head coach. Uh, We don't, I have no clue who it's going to be, so it'll be fun. And then also Sarah Sanders, Saunders? Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Yep. Yep. She has stepped down. She gone. She is. She's not out yet. She's she's yeah. been the press secretary for the president. She's on her way out. Uh, but she also ha- I breaking mean, news. Is she really the press secretary? It's been like ninety four days since she held a uh, press briefing. So hey. mm. title. But uh, she got a nice compliment from the president. He even said that he hopes that she runs for the governor of Arkansas. That is correct. Yeah, her father was a governor of Arkansas, so she's uh, you know we like. Uh, Oh, we we like uh, legacies around here, don't we? Yeah. Let's see how she did in the tenure. There's a, there's a listing of uh, who who's been the uh, press secretary the longest in the world. Uh, they don't make it very long sometimes, but uh, she has made it. I'm scrolling. Yeah, she's been like three and a half years. Do you see her on this list? Though? I do not. Do, 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 do. No, there was. She's the second one. You you've forgotten already that we had Sean Spicy Spicer uh, on the front end. Where the hell is she at? Mm, yeah, we did have Sean Spicer. Where is she? Sean Spicer? Also, isn't even on that list. What is this? Yeah, this is this is the list in order. This is in order of when they started. Sarah Sanders. Ah, here we go. One year, three hundred twenty-two days. Oh, I thought it was like so three she's, years. She's the thirty. No, no, no. Well, no. she was the campaign manager for. Trump. She was. Ah. She, she worked for him. She's been uh, with him for three years. Yeah, she's been with him for three and a half. No, that's oh, because wow. they don't have. Who could be listed in here? Yeah, so she's right up there with Dee Dee Sanders, uh, Dee Dee Myers rather, uh, who was uh, around for Clinton and uh, Robert Gibbs, who was there for Obama, right in the same time frame. She, Richard Nixon with Ron Ziegler. Ron Ziegler, yeah, he was there for over five, almost years. six years. That's crazy. Yeah, some of these, some of these guys. I mean, Dwight Eisenhower kept his guy for the whole eight years. Uh, do, 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 hmm. do, do. We're looking here. Um, how how Mike, many Mike days? Mike McCurry was around for a long time with Clinton. How many days was uh, Sean? Oh, Sean in there. Sean Spicer made it 182 days, so just over six months. Mm-hmm. January to July. Uh, and he was not the shortest nope. at, at all. There were guys that uh, there was Stephen qu- Early with Harry Truman made it 13 days. He was acting though. He wasn't the official one. Ah, I see that. But, uh, Gerald. Terhorst made it uh, 31 days with uh, with Ford, but that was obviously an unplanned presidency. <laughs> uh, that was kind of an emergency situation. Uh, Jim Brady uh, spoke for uh, the president, uh, President Reagan, for a little while. So, um, yeah, Spicer of the full timers, he's he's in the he's on the Mount Rushmore of the short short time made it for sure. Um, Tony Snow served just over a year, but he wound up. Uh, you wound up getting sick. The vast majority of them are one or two yeah, years. A year or two, and that's about, I mean, that's all you can really suffer through. Uh, that's just the reality of the job. A couple it'd of years. A, it'd be a rough job, especially with Donald Trump being the president and the way that the media just goes after it in the, phew, that would be rough. Yeah, I think. I, I couldn't do that job. She's done her, uh, she's done her part. I, I, it's understandable. So anyway. Congrats to her. I was a big fan of her dad's. Uh, don't agree with him on everything in politics, but uh, I was a I was a huckster. I like Mike Huckabee. So, um, there you go. We will uh, we'll see you all next week. Thank you for listening to the Boss Hog of Liberty, which is part of the We Are Libertarians Network. I am Chris Spangle, and I am the founder of this network. And I invite you to listen to all of our shows, which you can find at wearelibertarians.com or by searching for these in your podcatcher. The flagship show is the We Are Libertarians podcast, where we apply libertarian principles to current events. The Brian Nichols Show is a conversation amongst Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, Independents, as they talk about what is happening in the news. And we have many other podcasts like The Chris Spangle Show, Upward, The Cost, Raw Audio Politics, Miranda's World, and Tad Talk. 
which is quite a ride. So check all of these out. Go to WeAreLibertarians.com, and you can check out all of our great podcasts. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Get our other shows at WeAreLibertarians.com.